Rocks fall, everyone dies. You may have heard that phrase uttered by a terrible GM in a game of Dungeons and Dragons or a similar RPG, but for paleontologists, that's the reality of what happened to the non-avian dinosaurs and many of the organisms that lived alongside them. A giant rock from space fell and suddenly a lot of life on Earth wasn't around anymore. But not all of the animals died. For example, there's Purgatorius, which actually comes from North America and may have been the first primate. And it comes from sediments that are about 100,000 years after that impact. So its ancestors would have lived before this and pretty quickly afterwards evolved into what may have been the first primate. And seemingly that indicates that the trees and the ecosystem recovered pretty well by that 100,000 years after the impact. But there's new evidence that suggests that freshwater ecosystems may have recovered even faster because of a new fossil of a gar in the genus Atractosteus, which is actually the same genus of gar that are alive today. And there's also fossils of this genus of gar from before the impact. And this new one falls just 18 centimeters above the impact. And you can tell where the impact is because there's a distinct line of a very iridium rich clay, which iridium is very rare on Earth's surface, but is very common in asteroids, meteors, and comets. So it's likely that this comet essentially left this iridium layer when it hit the planet. Now the rock formation it was found in is the Fort Union Formation, which rests on tops of other famous dinosaur bearing formations like the Lance Formation and the Hell Creek Formation. So this is very much a very similar environment. In fact, many of the rocks are very similar, being a lot of sand and mudstones. However, there's a very distinct change in what animals are there once you transition into things like the Hell Creek Formation into the Fort Union Formation. And that's because big rock from space was bad for the dinosaurs. This scar was also found to be a new species, so with the same genus, Atractosteus grandii, with grandii being after Lance Grandy, a paleontologist who has done a ton of work on bony fossil fishes. So it's really relevant that he's actually has a fish named after him now. But there are a few different features that help to establish this. For example, a more triangular vomer bone, as well as having smaller teeth on that bone, an unornamented skull roof, meaning it doesn't have the same kinds of textures that we see in other gar, as well as a few other features in the skull. But now for the most important part about this gar, it was big. Now there's a lot of variation in gar today, and there's some photos floating around of ones from the early 1900s and late 1800s of some modern alligator gar that seem absolutely massive. And it wasn't quite that massive, but it was still pretty big, pushing a little bit over four feet or about 1.5 meters. And so if there's gar living today that can get even bigger, why is it so important that this one was pretty big? Because I mentioned, it was only 18 centimeters above that impact. And while it does mean there's some error in how much accumulation can occur from different sediments, it's very likely that this was only 1.5 to 2.5 thousand years after the impact. So a far cry from the 100,000 years it takes to find fossils of animals like Purgatorius. Instead, this was a much more rapid recovery of freshwater ecosystems after the impact. What this means is that freshwater ecosystems may have served as a refuge for many kinds of life. And that includes things like turtles and salamanders, because it's been suggested that the acid and the increase in acidity that would have happened in many ecosystems would have killed off a lot of salamanders simply because they're not built for it because they have porous skin. But we still have salamanders on both sides of this boundary, so how do they survive? Well, if fresh water recovered faster, maybe that's how they survived. Similarly, when you look at crocodilians, crocodilians were largely fresh water. Meanwhile, you have things like the mosasaurs and plesiosaurs, which are also large reptiles that are aquatic, but they're mostly living in the oceans, and the oceans didn't recover as quickly. So maybe that's why we have crocodilians, but not mosasaurs today. So while this is just a single fish fossil, and admittedly a new species of fish, it really does have a lot of importance in where it is placed geologically. And with its proximity to that impact, really helps us to understand what exactly was happening in the overall ecosystem right after the impact.